I can't do the crying thing, right? I am not that sentimental. I can't do, I can't do what is very much, I find slightly uncomfortable. It's a kind of a mainstream emotionality that you're supposed to kind of be like very kind of boohoo about size thing. You see footballers mm -mm, doing all this business, like whatever. That kind of like really cheap emotion. I cannot do that kind of stuff. Like it's not in me. Partly because I'm a comedian, because I'm old and cynical. Partly because I am Irish. Are there any Irish in? Good to have you here. We, we are not as sentimental people, the Irish, right? We're quite cynical and hard edge. Oh, we'll fucking sell sentimental. We will sell sentimental like you cannot believe. We will get Americans over and we will make them weep for our mysticism and sense of the soil and our poetic souls. My whole is any of it true, but we will sell it, right? And I don't just mean the Republic of Ireland, right? Is there any here from Northern Ireland? Any here from Belfast? Belfast is a fantastic city. If you want to go somewhere to eat or drink and have a party, Belfast is amazing at the moment, right? But Jesus, if you could ring one more coffee shop out of that Titanic disaster, you would. <laughs> Jesus, there must be something else in this. There must be something else in this. I said this in Belfast and a woman in the second row raised her hand and I said, yes. And she said, there is now an Asian restaurant here called Titanic. <laughs> We will sell that stuff, but we hate it. And here's an example of it. I was flying over to Ireland towards the start of this tour, and there was two Americans sitting in the seat behind me. And I knew this, because we'd done one of those things when you arrived and going, are you here, am I here, kind of thing, like whatever, and they were the row behind us, right? So we'd done that, right? And so I knew they were there. Plane comes in, not over the water and down like normal, but looping around, looping around, and then coming back in over the countryside. And outside the window on the left of the plane, there was a castle. A ruin of a castle, co-opted into the landscape, surrounded by farm buildings, but still a castle. And Jesus, they were delighted. They couldn't have been more thrilled to see the castle. You could hear him by, oh, honey, honey, a castle. Nudge, nudge, she leans across. A castle. I mean, it's an ancient landscape. It's fantastic, right? And I'm sitting in front going, ah, grand, they saw a castle. Good for them, right? Plane comes into land, there are two runways in Dublin Airport, outer runway, loops across to go up into the terminal building, so we're looking up the other runway. When a fucking rabbit runs across the runway. I'm 43, I have never seen this happen before, and the rabbit pegging across the runway, right? With this big look in its eyes of, Jesus, what land of the giants am I in here? Right? The, the belts across the runway, and I'm going, oh, there we go, behind me, loving it. Honey, 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 a rabbit. She leans across, oh, a rabbit. And I'm going, right, and I just turn in the chair and wedge my head between the seats. <laughs> The castle is a perfectly permissible thing to bring back to America and tell people about. But the rabbit was a freak event. <laughs> Don't you dare go home and tell people that Dublin Airport has to be reclaimed from rabbits every time a plane goes into that. <laughs> that castle is not there so that a man with binoculars is going, Jesus, there's a plane coming from London. Quick, get the rabbits off the runway. <laughs> and men with brooms are going, Jesus, we need a better long-term solution to this particular problem. <laughs> Cannot do that, cannot do that kind of just sentimentality, cannot do that kind of moral, cannot do sincerity. This is, must be a lacking in a person, particularly as a broadcaster. I can't do sincerity, lads. You'll never see me be sincere, right? And I can't do sincerity because of the film Return of the Jedi. <laughs> There's a bit in the film Return of the Jedi where it killed sincerity. You've all seen Return of the Jedi at some stage, right? But there's a bit in Return of the Jedi where the scene where the, this woman, this space princess woman, walks out to present the rebel forces with the, you know, with the information about how to blow up the Death Star. She walks and goes, yeah, but here's the plans of the Death Star. She should have walked off at that point, job done, right? But she didn't. She had another line to deliver about the, the high cost of the plans of the Death Star, right? And, and, and to add some shade to the scene, you know, to add some darkness to it all. And then she did sad acting, right? So this woman walks out and goes, these are the plans of the Death Star. And then for no good reason goes, many buttons died <laughs> to bring us this information. And then genuinely went, hmm. <laughs> And even as a 12-year-old, I'm in the cinema going, get that fucking ham off the stage, right? <laughs> that is the most overacting, insincere shite I have ever seen. That has shattered my sense of disbelief. And I was struggling to hold on at this point, right? But I went with it, Lucas. I went with the teddy bears winning the laser battle against the robot <laughs> army. I let that slide, right? 
I went with it when Mr. Bronson from Grange Hill suddenly appeared as one of the major figures in the Imperial forces. I let that slide, but this ooh, has ruined it for me, right? And I can't do sincere. Know this. If you ever see me being sincere on the telly, know that this scene runs in my head constantly, right? That if I'm ever there going, if you simply text 75005, you'll donate five pounds. And five pounds to a community like this will keep them in mosquito nets or malaria tablets for six months. Many buttons died. <laughs> Hi, this is Dara Breen. This is my YouTube channel, so subscribe and like to get more funny clips.